This is the Compound Intensity Level 1 board game which goes with Lesson 17 in your Friendly Chemistry course. Now in Lesson 17 you will have been introducing to your students how to calculate formula weights or molar masses as they're also known. This game will give your students many opportunities to not only practice finding formula weights but also identification of anions, cations, and writing compound formulas as well. The game board itself is found in your teacher edition and you'll likely want to make copies of those so you can lay them flat on, on a table. You'll also want to look in your manipulative booklet and find the compound intensity card sets. Note there's a cation deck and an anion deck. So once you cut those out, you'll need to uh, separate the cards into the two decks. You'll also need some playing pieces for your students as well as a die. Your students now can play uh, in teams for this game or they, if you have a uh, few students they can each play on their own. We recommend having no more than two students per team. On the game board there are basically four different types of spaces that you can land on. So play will begin with the team rolling the die and then uh, that team or individual landing on a particular space. Let's look at the different spaces you can land on first here. The first space we see right here says anion. If a team or a student lands on the anion space their task is to take one anion card and reveal that card to everyone playing. Now each team should have a, a blank piece of paper and pencil and if you allow calculators that's fine uh, for each team to have also. If they've landed on an anion space the task for that team is to just write the correct symbol and charge for that particular anion. Now in this case they uh, have sulfite as their anion so they would write SO3 minus 2 with parentheses and then show their work to you uh, on their paper. If their work is correct that team earns the face value of the points on the card. In this case they would earn 30 points. Now if it's incorrect the other teams that are also playing and have also written a response on their paper will have a chance to steal these point values. We'll talk about the stealing process here a little bit later on. Okay, So that's if they land on an anion space. If they land on a cation space the task is the same. They'll just draw a uh, card from the cation deck, reveal it to everyone playing, and then go about writing down the symbol and charge for that cation. Likewise with the anion card if it's correct, they earn the face value of 30 points, in this case, for their efforts. The used cards are uh, set aside or placed underneath the other cards and just recycled through the deck. Now, another uh, space that you could possibly land on is one that's called compound formula. Compound formula. Uh, if you land on that, what you do is you take a cation card and an anion card and then based upon what the cards tell you is the compound that you'll write. So in this case uh, the team uh, have sodium nitrite on their cards so on their paper they would write out the symbol and charge both for the sodium and the nitrite uh, ions and then do what it takes. Write the sub necessary subscripts to uh, write the correct compound formula for sodium nitrite. When they think they have it completed, they show it to you. If it's correct, they earn double face value for their efforts. So in this case, they will have the face value would be 10 plus 30 be 40 points, and because they've had to do a more difficult task, they double those points. So we'd have 30, uh, 10 is 40, so they would earn. 80 points for a correct response. All right? 
So, and then those cards are discarded here. Okay. A third type space that you can land on is one that says formula weight. Formula weight. In this case, again, the student, whoever uh, team, whose ever turn it is, draws a cation and an anion card, shows it to everyone in the group, and everyone goes about writing or calculating the formula weight for, in this case, lithium sulfate. So first, obviously, they'd have to write the correct symbol for the cation and the anion. They'd have to be able to come up with the correct compound formula, and then based upon that, calculate the formula weight. When they think they have it, uh, their uh, final answer complete, they show you their result. If it's correct, they earn triple face value this time for their efforts. So in this case, they'd have 30 plus 10 is 40. The triple that would be 120 points earned for their team. Now let's talk about if they should uh, have an incorrect response. Let's pretend that they had a wrong charge here on sulfate when they wrote it down. Therefore, their compound was written incorrectly, and obviously the formula weight ended up being incorrect. In that case, if when a uh, team shows you an incorrect response, you can say, well, you have an incorrect response, and the other teams now have a chance to steal. So the other teams who are also playing uh, one by one show you their response, their answers. If they are correct, that team, or however many other teams have correct responses, can steal those points and it is exactly the same point value so since it's a formula weight and triple point triple times uh, the face value those teams each could earn 120 points and then the team who had the incorrect response it's a good idea to look at their work show them uh, where the mistake was made and then play can continue Righty? So that's how the stealing works. Now, if you have a situation where no team gets a correct answer, the best uh, move after, at that point is to discuss with all the teams where their mistakes were made and then replay the round. So whoever's turn it was uh, originally for the round, uh, if they land on uh, Formula Weight or wherever they had landed and the mistakes were made, they do the same, repeat the same task. So if they landed on Formula Weight, they'll draw two new cards and again attempt to uh, find a correct Formula Weight and then play continues as normal. Now because there are many cards in each deck, there are quite a few combinations of compounds that can result. To make things easier for you, we've prepared an answer key. Now this is a two-page answer key that you can find in your teacher edition. On the answer key, down the left-hand side of the chart, we list all the anions. Going across the top of the chart, we've listed the cations that are found in the card decks. And then by uh, finding the combination of the two that are at play at the moment. For example, if you had barium bromide, you would come down the barium column and then go across the bromide row, uh, row here. You can find what the correct compound would look like, and then beneath it, the value for the formula weight. And then beneath that, we also have values for percent composition. Now, percent composition uh, comes in compound intensity level two, which we'll talk about in our next segment. So know that you have this answer key, and like I said, it's a two-page uh, sheet found in your teacher edition. can save you a lot of time uh, in calculating all the results here. There are, there's one more type of space, and it's a special kind of instruction space. For example, we have one here. Uh, if you land here, it says go back two spaces, and you just do whatever is on that compound formula in this case. Uh, there's another lose a turn if you land there you lose a turn and uh, play just goes to the next team. Uh, there's one here that says any two cards for double points. If you land on this any two card 
uh, space here. It's your choice whether you want to take two anion, uh, cation cards or two anion cards. If you take two cation cards, then your task would, would be just to uh, identify a symbol and charge for those two cations. So in this case, you would have uh, 10 2 should be SN, or 10 4 would be SN plus 4, and ammonium with NH4 plus 1. So if that student or team were successful at identifying those, they would just get face value and then times 2 because you get double points up here. If you chose two anion cards, you could do the same task and get double points. Now, if you were a little more risky in your play, or confident in your play, you could do a uh, compound formula for double point value. So in that case, you could choose uh, one of each, obviously. Get one turned over here. Like this, potassium permanganate. You would do a compound formula. If you were correct, you would get your 50 plus 10 is 60. Normally, you would get 120 points because you double this point value, but because you land on the double point space, you could get 240 points for it. So that's a, uh, if you're a little more risky. Now, if you want to take the ultimate challenge, you could take one of each cards and find a formula weight value for it. So let's just look at that ex possible example. Let's say you took got 10-2 and then you drew wild card. Woo! Wild cards here in the deck. In this case, you can identify your wild card as to any anion that you would like. Okay, You can choose anyone on the list you would like and you share that information with everyone else playing so if you should make a mistake they have an opportunity to steal your points. So hopefully that's not the case. And so then you go about calculating the formula weight. If you had it got it correct you would have 125 points you normally triple that, so that's what, 375, and then because you landed on the double point space, you could get uh, double that, so what's that, uh, 750 points uh, for that one round, which would be an excellent round. Now, if you do make a mistake, other teams uh, have a chance to steal those points, which would be a sad situation, and if they get it correct, then they can earn just as many points for their team. There's one more space here, which is a 50 free point space and roll again. If you land there, you get 50 points and you roll again, but you have to land on the space. It's not a, a pass-go type situation, so you have to land there to earn those 50 uh, free points. To end the game, there are a couple options you can take. One is you can play to a set point value, say 1,000 points or 2,000 points. Another option is to play till the end of class time or a certain time on the clock. And that way then you can see who has the most points then and then they win the overall game. So this is the compound intensity game which goes with uh, lesson 17 in your course. And like I said earlier, there is a level 2 uh, for the next lesson and we'll go over that in our next segment. So. Enjoy your time playing compound intensity with your students.